What's up guys? So today we are actually going to be taking another deep dive into another Pokemon that I think that you guys probably didn't necessarily ask for, but I think this is one that needs to be brought up. Uh, it's coming up to the last half of the month and a lot of people are starting to really get down to the wire in terms of what they need to pick for their Tempest Cup teams. So before I get back on track with what you guys have suggested, I really do want to get this one out of the way. And it's kind of a two for one because I'll talk about two different but very similar Pokemon here. Anyways, so let's get started with today. So today we're actually going over Glalie, which is a pure ice type Pokemon maxing out with 15 IVs across the board at level 40, you're going to be able to hit 2105. You can actually achieve 1498 at level 27.5. If you do have a 0 on attack, 13 defense, and 13 stamina. The reason that we choose that IV combination per se is so that you can actually get the maximum stat product out of your Glalie at level 27.5. Inside the Tempest Cup, we actually do rank 27th in bulk and 23rd in stat products, so that's actually really good. Uh, it is definitely on the higher end. It's not the highest numbers that we've seen, but it's definitely a, a respectable position in the meta here. We actually can achieve an 86.58% of our potential when it comes to our stat product. Of course, that is calculated by this 2105, that stat product that you would have with 15s across the board and then taking our highest level with zero IVs and figuring out how much potential out of our Pokemon we will actually get with those stats. So being on the upper side of 80% is always a good thing. That means you're always gonna be able to get a really nice set of stats out of your Pokemon. I really, really do like when we at least hit 85. Moving on to moves, since we are an ice type Pokemon, I do have our ice types here in blue for you. So we actually have two fast moves being Frost Breath and Ice Shard. Frost Breath actually coming up with 2.5 energy for a 3.5 damage per turn. Ice Shard being 3.33 energy per turn for a 3 damage per turn. Honestly, Ice Shard is preferred in most matchups that i found considering that they're both ice type moves. It's really more advantageous to have the higher energy here because Avalanche is kind of like your main star, the main bread and butter to having a Glalie. And considering that Ice Shard gets you to this Avalanche move way faster, it's definitely preferred. It's okay to forfeit this half a damage per turn for a substantial increase in energy per turn. Moving on to our charge moves, we actually do have Avalanche here, costing 45 energy to fire, doing 90 damage for a whopping 2.0 damage per energy ratio. That is always amazing. I love to see a 2.0 there. And being said, it's such a low cost at only 45. That is an amazing little move there. Next, we actually do have Gyro Ball, which is a steel type move, meaning we, of course, won't get our stab bonus, costing 60 energy, doing 80 damage for a 1.33 ratio. Shadow Ball being a ghost type move of course means we don't get stab, costing 55 energy doing 100 damage for a 1.82 damage per energy ratio. So out of the move package that we do have here, I personally really like Ice Shard Avalanche Gyro Ball. That seems to be basically the consensus of most people. Shadow Ball can have a place in certain places, but it's just not really preferred. It's just going to do neutral damage to most of the meta. And having Gyro Ball be a Steel type, it really gives you an advantage in uh, a lot of mirror matches between pure Ice types. In all of our deep dive glory, let's actually go over some positives and negatives to Glalie here. So, of course, starting with our negatives first, we do have a glaring weakness being Fire, Rock, and Steel. So, the pure Ice type is actually not that bad considering that we're going to be resisting a lot of our Ice type moves in this meta. I think that's a really good place to sit. The problem is that we carry quite a few weaknesses to it that really kind of put Glalie behind in some places. Fire type moves, rock type moves, steel type moves are all going to be really devastating and we'll go over a little bit more of the matchups in a second to kind of go into why that's so negative. But honestly that's the only negative that I can really think of when it comes to Glalie. So on to our positives here, we do have a really strong matchup percent 
Whenever you're going with no shields, if you go with the moveset that I stated, being Ice Shard Avalanche Gyro Ball, you actually win 74.8% of your matchup. That's almost three quarters of the Pokemon available in the Tempest Cup that you're going to beat. Like, imagine that. You're setting yourself up to have three quarters of the game done. Two shields versus zero shields, meaning that we actually have shields in our favor. We actually win 96.6% .6 of the matches. So that, of course, sounds huge. But the only reason that I ran that is to see what Pokemon actually just straight up beat Glalie, no matter what. So some of the bigger picks here are Walrein, Celio, Dugong, and Lapras. So what that tells me is that going up against those four Pokemon, Glalie has very, very, very little chance. Of course, there are certain circumstances where he could win, but in general, two shields where everybody played it like they were supposed to, starting from full health, no energy, Glalie's going to pretty much just dog it in those matches, unfortunately. Uh, next, moving on to zero shields versus two shields. Now, the reason that I run this is to figure out how good Glalie would be as a closer and he only wins 8.4% of his matchups. So he definitely loses a lot whenever you don't have shields, which tells you that you really need to kind of pick and choose where you use Glalie, and we'll get into that a little bit more in just a second. Interestingly enough, the only matchup that I found interesting that Glalie actually wins with no shields where your opponent will have two shields is Altaria. So what that tells you is that Glalie is a really good hard counter for Altaria. I really like Glalie up against that matchup, and that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this deep dive. And then next, of course, we do have two shields versus two shields. So what happens when you use Glalie as a lead? You end up winning about 58% of the matches. So you don't necessarily have a great lead because it's almost a 50-50 chance, but you do have a little bit more of an edge than most Pokemon, so that kind of secures him into a weird situation where I don't really consider him a good lead. I definitely don't consider him a good closer, but I think he is an amazing mid. I think that he is a great mid that you want to kind of have in your pocket for certain scenarios, but it's going to be really tough if you get caught with no shields or if you get caught put up with two versus two shields. You're kind of going to be in a kind of a 50-50 situation there. Next on our positives, we do have what I consider Glalie a sleeper pick. Now what I mean by that is that a lot of people aren't going to be really expecting Glalie and the people that don't know the matchups, the people that don't know the fact that it has Gyro Ball, it could throw those people off. So I definitely think in terms of a, of a psychological type pick, I definitely think that it could mess with some people, which I think is a great thing. Lastly on our positives is that Glalie actually cleans up a lot of the non-meta Pokemon. So I think this is really where Glalie finds its niche because the fact that he can clean up a lot of these non-meta Pokemon mean that if you take a Glalie, you pretty much have a really good chance at winning if someone decides to bring Nidoqueen or if someone decides to bring some other Pokemon that's just random and not really like a, a pure meta pick. So I think that's really what Glalie has going for it, and I think that's what makes it such a good Pokemon to take in consideration when building your team. Next, let's actually move on to matchups here. So I do have the top 10 bulkiest Pokemon. Actually, yeah, I did 11. My bad. The top 11 bulkiest Pokemon in the cup here. And going over our losses first, so some of these are going to sound pretty familiar. Dugong, Regice, Lapras, Lantern, and Skarmory. So two of those Pokemon are actually on the list of if we had two shields and they had no shields, they'd still beat us anyways. Dugong and Lapras are just really, really strong. We don't have the amount of damage that we need to push out to actually take down a bulky Pokemon like Lapras or Dugong. Being that Regice is a pure ice type as well, he can resist a lot of the fast type damage that we end up doing. And even with Gyro Ball, he's still quite bulky, so it's really hard to overcome that. I'm sure in this, I ran this off of PV Pokey, so I'm sure that PV Pokey is actually choosing fighting type moves up against Glalie, but either way, Regice could give you some trouble. Lantern, of course, Lantern is just, uh, Lantern, we've talked about him before, he's an amazing Pokemon. 
and he's got a lot of bulk to him which really makes him really difficult to take down. Of course he can just really tear through Glalie quicker than we can tear through Lantern. Skarmory kind of doing the same thing here. Beings that were weak to Steel, Skarmory having access to Steel type moves can actually make it a really bad matchup in the Tempest Cup here. On to our positives though, we do actually end up beating Steelix, Tropius, Lugia, Jumpluff, Altaria, and Claydol. So you can kind of see a, a little bit of a trend there. If you're flying or ground type, you kind of end up losing pretty hard to Glalie. Which, transitioning into our new segment here, where we actually talk about hard counters and what you should actually use Glalie for. The Pokemon that end up hardcore countering Glalie are going to be anything that kind of carries that ice type with it. So like Lapras, Dugong, Cilio, those are really hard to get around because they're just so good at resisting your damage and either dealing neutral damage or dealing something that's got a lot more oomph to it than what Glalie actually does. Any kind of steel type moves like Magneton can carry and Skarmory can also carry. Those Pokemon are going to give you a lot of trouble. And even rock type moves can give you quite a bit of trouble. So like Quagsire, Golem, and Graveler can also give you issues. Both of those being the Alolan version because if Cantonian, Graveler, and Golem carry the ground typing, they're going to be pretty weak to you. But either way, uh, rock types are also an issue that you may need to look out for. In terms of what you should use Glalie for though, anything that's grass type, anything that's flying type are really going to suffer to you. Things like Torterra, Obama Snow, Altaria, and Tropius are all really, really good things that you should push for when you have a Glalie on your team. I personally am putting Glalie on my team. I think he's a really, really solid pick. The fact that he has such a high percentage win rate really means that you can cover a lot of the off meta and quite a bit of the meta with Glalie, so I think he's a pretty safe pick here. I'm pretty sure that I'm already, if if you guys haven't already commented before even getting to this part of the video, I'm sure that people are going to ask about Frostlass. So I looked a little bit into Frostlass to try to compare her and Glalie together, and here's the thing. Frostlass is a better shield buster by far, but she's a little bit more frail. So you're going to end up giving up a little bit of your bulk in for a lot more of a speed and shield buster type Pokemon. And if that's what you need, Frostlass probably does do better for you because it actually has access to Powder Snow, I'm pretty sure, which has an insane energy gain per turn. And the fact that it ends up having just a really, really quick charge move to fire off makes it so good in terms of shield breaking, but you are forgiving, you are giving up a little bit of that bulk for that package so keep that in mind if you look at your team and you realize holy cow i need some i need some more shield breaking pokemon frostlass will definitely do you really well it has a very comparable time and stat wise everything to glalie it's very comparable but you are forfeiting the bulk which is the main point that i chose glalie over frostlass for me personally do i recommend glalie yes if you need a pokemon to cover a wide range of pokemon yes by all means, yes. One of the biggest interesting things that I found is Glalie can actually tie against Charizard. So even though Charizard should be able to take out Glalie with super effective damage, Glalie has enough oomph to actually tie with Charizard in certain matchups. So pretty interesting, which I, I just, I keep finding out all these little tidbits about Glalie and I, I definitely keep liking him more and more. So, that is actually going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, in a couple of hours, I should have a video go live about choosing a flyer and a mud boy and how they actually interact. If you guys are at all interested in that, make sure you stick around and watch that. And if you may need some pointers on which one to choose, that would probably be the video to watch. Uh, the only other thing is that this week, um, actually, today and tomorrow so monday and tuesday after 4 p.m eastern i'm going to be doing some test practice matches on pokemon go for the tempest cup but i'm coordinating all of that through discord so if you look in the description below you can actually find the link to the discord if you're at all interested in running some matches i will be recording them and you know making a video out of it for the end of this week i do feel that the new cup announcement is imminent Based on when the Tempest Cup was announced, it's pretty close to time for them to announce it. So I'm trying to 
get all my practice in and my tournament is actually I'm pretty sure it's this upcoming weekend I need to double check my dates but either way Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like to like videos, make sure you do that. If you don't, you can be that guy. Otherwise, let me know what you have to say down in those comments below. And until our next video, I will catch you then.